briefly in this video about hard drives. Hard drives are pretty simple and they've gotten a whole lot better than when I was in school. So we're going to talk about kind of the different flavors, what they look like, but this should probably be one of the easiest sections we do in this class. So a lot of this is just kind of show and tell to make sure that you've seen what we're talking about, but this is not going to be really hard. So hard drives, what are they? Well, a hard drive is basically where we store the stuff we want to keep, right? Because in RAM, when we turn off the power, all the information we used and stored is gone. So this is where you, st you save the pictures and videos and music and things that you're going to use on your device when the power goes away. So it's called non-temporary storage, okay? Uh, we call them hard drives, all right? Now, hard drives are pretty simple. They come in two flavors. They come in what we call the traditional spinners, uh, spinning hard drives. Here's one live for show and tell purposes. Um, this is a bad one that I took out of my sand that I'll talk about in a minute. But this thing has discs in it that spin and heads that go between the platters. The, the discs are called platters. It's got an interface where I plug in the cable inside the computer. It's got screws on the side where I screw it into the, into the case so that it's held firm. Um, it takes, obviously it needs power to spin the drives. If you ever have one of these things and you hear it going click, 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 your hard drive has crashed. The heads are crashing, they're slapping against um, the stops, so to speak. And a lot of times that's a really bad sign that you've lost everything on this thing. And if this thing happens to be the, the main hard drive of your computer, you're kind of in a world of hurt. So back up your work, back up your work, back up your system, and then back up your work. Okay, so that's a spinner. And these things come in all kinds of sizes. In fact, several years ago, I had one that I thought had some important family pictures and movies that I didn't think I had backed up. And it crashed on me and I was crushed. And I was so upset that I sent it to an FBI crime lab and they have a white room and you could pay them several hundred dollars to take your drive apart in a dust-free environment. And they had forensic tools that they used to remove data from hard drives that, you know, when they bust in your door and take your drives away. But they also had kind of a, a public partner that would work with them to help people recover information that they wanted. So I tried and it cost me like 350 bucks to try and they got nothing off my drive. My drives had crashed so badly that the heads, which are floating fractions of a centimeter away from the disks, um, they actually ended up touching the disks and destroying the data. So you really have to back up your work. And these things kind of, if, if they're more than a couple years old, you need to be making sure that your stuff's backed up, especially if you use a particular drive very, very heavily. Now they're gonna tell you they can last a lot longer than that, and sometimes they do. I've had drives last me eight, 10 years. Um, it just kind of depends. All right, the other kind is the new ones that are solid state. And the interesting thing about solid state drives is that they're so thin on the new ones that they have to make the case for the drive fat enough so that you, it can support plugging in the ribbon cable inside your computer, which is kind of silly. So these things have gotten to where they hold a lot more information um, and they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller physically because they can store more and more information in the same space, so to speak. Um, show you a couple, obviously you've seen these things, right? Your common thumb drive. Um, and this particular one holds eight gigs of information in that. Now, here's a new one that I got that literally holds all of the videos on my channels. This is a half a terabyte drive. And look how small it is, okay? I have one of these for my dissertation research and one of these for my movies. And I mean, these things are dirt cheap. It's like 50 bucks at Walmart anymore. And they're really, really fast too. So they plug right into the South Bridge via the USB ports of my motherboard. Um, but even going through the South Bridge, these are pretty fast, okay? No spinning parts to have to spin up and wait for it to get to speed and then read your data. Okay. All right. Uh, let's move to the next slide. So as you can see, like I said, thumb drives are becoming works of art. You see them in movies now where, you know, the, 
the spy or the agent, whatever, pulls one out of a watch, pulls it out of jewelry. I mean, these things, uh, this is a little uh, bag, a gift bag. There's a guitar. I mean, there's Iron Man. I had a girl turn in a final project and it was the butt of a pig. She's like, oh, I got this little piglet thing, USB thing when I was like 12. And so here's my project. It was hilarious. Anyway, they also have some of the new drives like these that come with environmental protections. So they're either waterproof and you'll find that they have rubber gaskets that you close uh, over the ports, obviously. Um, and, you know, you drop it in the river because you're, you're doing some whitewater rapids and you've got your GoPro and you're offloading it to one of these because you can hold a lot of video on these things. Um, they, they come in very handy. Now you're gonna pay for that extra protection on the drive, but if you're gonna use it in the great outdoors, so to speak, it's very well worth the money. All right, now this thing is called a SAN. I've talked about this once before. It's a storage area network. This one has five spinners. Um, like I said, I've got a couple of these in my house because one of them's getting ready to die on me, but I use them under RAID 5 and I have four two terabyte spinners in them. So that's two, four, six, eight terabytes of storage that's raw, but because I use it under RAID 5, it gives me five terabytes of usable storage. Now, the RAID algorithm, when I save a file to it, it writes it a little bit to each of the drives. And it's a, an algorithm where if, if one of my drives goes bad, I get a caution light on the system. So I shut it down, take it out, go to the store, buy a brand new matching drive that's blank, slide it in, close it back up, turn it back on, wait a couple hours, and it will literally, using the information on the other drives, rebuild the array stack some pretty heavy math involved there, but it will rebuild the array stack for me and I've lost nothing. And I have weddings, bar mitzvahs, other events, all my family movies from when my kids were real little. I've got all of that on there and I, some of it goes back 30 years. So it's, it's really cool storage. And the new ones you can access wireless if you've got it on your network. That's why it's called a NAS, it's network attached storage. You can have user accounts where you can let people log in and back things up to, the, to your personal cloud. Um, and they're really, really cool and they're not that expensive anymore. Newer still are the ones that use flash drives that you can put in here. Those things are really fast. Um, and again, you need to understand that even these can fail. And I don't mean just because your dog bit it and ran off with it. They also fail because they have a finite number of read and writes that they can do before they just break. Um, now for most home use, you're not gonna see that. You're gonna upgrade it. But if you've got one of these for six, seven years and you use it a lot, again, you kind of want to think about this thing's getting old, maybe I want to refresh it and put on a new one. By then this thing probably hold 10 terabytes. So these things are getting very, very good and very small and very inexpensive. The last thing I want to talk about with hard drives is vulnerabilities. Um, one of my combat postings, we were in a camp overseas and some bad players were taking some of the newer thumb drives and they had rootkit viruses on them. Otherwise they were blank and they were brand new and they were dropping them all over the base. And soldiers and sailors would find them and pick them up and go, wow, some of these things are like 40, 50 bucks back then. And these are these are pretty cool. I'm gonna you know, stick it in my drive and it launches a rootkit virus into your computer, which then spreads if that thing's on any kind of a network. And unfortunately, one of our sailors used it on a secure network and actually created a vulnerability to our secret network, which they caught fairly quickly but the damage had already been done. Someone had been able to get access and they had to figure out what was lost and then you know redo certain codes and things like that. So as these things become more portable, you need to understand that you don't necessarily wanna have all your personal information on these things unless you protect this as well, okay? And they, you know, don't just take anybody's random thumb drive and stick it in your computer. You really wanna know, I actually have an old laptop that I use as a quarantine laptop. And it's got, like I think it's even got an old ver version of Windows on it. And I'll basically, if I'm not sure about a drive, I'll put it in there and run a scan on it and make sure that it's virus free. 
and then I will use it if I need to. Otherwise, I just don't put drives in that I don't know. Uh, again, it's just, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth 10 pounds of cure and, and virally attacking your computers because you thought you found something cool on the ground. Okay, so be smart with the drives. Um, know the limits of the drive, right? Even if you buy a waterproof one, know what it can take and what it can't. Make sure that if you're going to be in a, an environment that you have all the rubber seals closed um, because, you know, as we carry our information around more and more, we need to be cognizant of the physical limits of these devices. Okay, so that's it for hard drives. Like I said, it wasn't going to be real taxing. On the other side, we're going to talk about memory. But for now, I'll see you in a bit.